the funny thing about that process was that that was the McSweeney's theme that they wanted. And then I thought that we should have like like a, a hummable, radio friendly, you know, um, uh, song with lyrics and everything that would become the McSweeney's theme that we would play at, you know, events and everything. And so they, and at the same time, we had just found out that our namesake, Timothy McSweeney, was not just like this weird fictional guy from my childhood, which is what the journal is named after, but he was, he was an actual man. And one of our interns was, uh, we had just taken on an intern named Ross McSweeney, and he was a student at Columbia. Uh, and shortly after meeting him, I was like, oh, well, I'm a McSweeney too, we must be related. And he said, well, you know, as a matter of fact, uh, I think Timothy is, a, is my uncle. And we, I've told this story, it's in the, it's in the journal. Um, it turns out his uncle uh, was Timothy McSweeney, was delivered by, he, as a baby, was delivered by my grandfather, and a, and a, who was an obstetrician in Boston. Um, he was shortly after adopted by another McSweeney family. Because my grandfather is Daniel McSweeney, delivers the baby, hands them off. He, the, he's, the baby's given up for adoption. Is adopted by another McSweeney family from the Boston area, is raised by them, and um, but later in life, um, and he was an art student, taught art at Tufts, everything, and later in life he had some um, difficulties and um, uh, suffered some mental illness, and that's when he started sending bizarre letters to our family, um, claiming to be a member of our family, and he had found my mother and I through some bizarre postal database or something. I don't know how it worked. But anyway, so I told this whole story to John and John that we'd like to have a theme song for Timothy McSweeney's quarterly, but it has to be somewhat sober and respectful of actually like the true suffering that this guy, that our namesake, had lived through. And <laughs> But uh, it's only funny because, you know, I told them all this. I think I was, you know, halfway around the world or something. And I came back and we met up in New York and he played me the song. And uh, that's where you cut to the, uh, <laughs> the song. And this is where, at events, I tell that story sometimes and then play the song, which is the most ridiculous song in the world. It's like an I old Irish bar song, you know, walking through the streets of, Boston, you know, da 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 da, and then it goes into this chorus, rousing chorus, Timothy McSweeney, Tim, yeah, it's very, um, it's kind of offensive in a way, in a, in a very funny way, but the McSweeney family has appreciated it, they think it's nice. Walking alone on the streets of Boston, a man with a name that everybody knows, please recognize our notable namesake, Timothy McSweeney's The Journal of Prose, and music, and art, Timothy McSweeney. Sweetie, he takes a pad of paper and he writes things down. Timothy McSweeney.